Good afternoon, good evening, or good day, depending on when you're tuning into this. It is another hump day, Wednesday, third day of the week, and it is today's talk. I'm Marty G, and I have another friend with me and business owner. I have Amy Nelson. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hello, I'm well, thank you. How are you doing? Well, I'm finally happy to finally have you on my show. I mean, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to be on. You're just a busy person. You know, I don't get mad um, at all when people can't be on because that means their business is going really well. So how are things for you? Things are good. I am, as you said, keeping busy and apologies again for having to cancel on you before, but it's not a real estate it, it, agent. Postpone and cancel. Cancel is, dude, go find some place else to be. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. Postpone is, yeah, something else came on that's going to like cost me money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, go with the money. I'm all right with that. So let's talk about what you do. Tell me about your business. What do you do? I am a residential real estate agent in Lane County. Okay, so here's an interesting thing for me. Isn't there like an army of real estate, residential real estate agents in Lane County? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what were I, you I feel like that's, that's a major understatement. <laughs> okay. So what were you doing before you became a residential real estate agent in Lane County? What were you doing before this? So I used to be an early childhood educator. I worked um, as a preschool teacher mm -hmm. and um, then I worked with toddlers, then I worked with infants, kind of like Benjamin Button teaching there, getting younger and younger. Yeah, that's kind of going backwards, right? Which I guess kind of makes sense. The less they talk, the easier they are to deal with. <laughs> Have no? you ever had a room of 12 infants at once? Well, uh, I don't know. You've been to greeters. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding, greeters. <laughs> just a joke. Just joking. No, I have not had a room of 12 infants at once. So I guess, no, I could only, that's a lot of like diapers and crying and bottles at once and stuff. So yeah, not so good. Yeah. But also a lot of cuddles and play and fun learning and all the milestones happening. Like it was actually quite magical working with that age group. Now, do you have kids yourself? I do not. So are you ready to have some now since you started having all those kids and you had all those kids or did that kind of take care of it for a while? Like you're going to put that on hold for a bit or? <laughs> Neither, actually. I love children. My husband and I volunteer with, with kids in the community, but um, we just don't have any of our own. Okay. So let's, let's talk about that later. So what made you make the hard left turn from childhood development and education to real estate what 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 hit your brain i mean how, how did that turn happen i actually fell into real estate it was not something i was seeking okay um, i absolutely love working with children and like i said i still do i still volunteer working with kids but um i left the profession because of the adults not the kids okay um, and not the parents. I mean, parents can be challenging too. Don't get me wrong. Oh yes, but I bet. <laughs> it was actually the administration. It was a. Uh, it was difficult um, trying to convey the needs of the children I was helping um, amongst the requirements that they kept setting. That just didn't didn't equate with the mission that I wanted and taking care of tiny humans. Oh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I ended up walking away from childcare um, because it, administration and I could never see eye to eye on things. Um, and real estate happened accidentally when I was uh, out to dinner with a friend telling her how discouraging it was. Like, you know, I, want, I love doing something that I'm passionate about, but um, I just couldn't, couldn't do the job that I was doing. And she said, well, my office could use some help. And she worked in real estate hmm. and uh, they did not have a job description. They were not actually seeking a uh, position. They were just overwhelmed. So I met with the owner. Um, we hit it off. She hired me and uh, my job evolved. I actually became an agent and the rest is history. The next thing you know, uh, old Jed's a millionaire, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That is really cool, and, and it's something you were able to transfer that, just translate that passion into. I think you said something 
that I relate to huge. I mean, it, I don't ever want to say, because I don't want to minimize what you did then and what you do now, but passion, that's a really, really big thing, right? You got to be passionate about what you do. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've worked other jobs that were just jobs and I was good at them, if I do say so myself, but I <laughs> not, to, not to break my arm patting myself on the back, but you know. I was pretty darn awesome. <laughs> yeah, but but you know the the excitement. Um, I mean, it's it's very different. The excitement of working with children and watching them develop and and their personalities grow and become who they are. Um, but there is there is an excitement and passion that goes along with helping people move into their first home or um, work through selling the home that they raised their children in and move on to the next chapter of their life. Like still exciting there's still passion there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so tell me so from the i guess if you think about this the, the shift you know what was maybe um the first surprise thing that maybe caught you off guard you're like okay well i didn't really expect that what was like maybe the first misconception that you ran into when it came to pursuing a, a, this brand new career in real estate what was the first thing that kind of maybe caught you off guard well, um, so one of the reasons that I didn't want to go into the job <laughs> is that <laughs> I am a pretty type A personality. I like structure. I like um, to predict what my next step is. I like to know, plan, and execute. And I was like, real estate's chaotic. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. I can't, I can't drop what I'm doing on a whim of someone who wants to go see a home. And so I had this, this preconception that um, the real estate world did not fit with who I am. And my first job in real estate was a nine to five salaried position. I didn't start out as an agent. I started out as an office assistant. Oh. And, um, and I was like, there we go. I get to be in real estate, which is interesting because it's always changing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have to deal with the chaos. Yeah, it's, it's still chaotic, chaotic, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cha chaotic between the hours of nine to five, right? <laughs> yeah, which then extended into nights and weekends very quickly. And so mm -hmm. that's actually what evolved into, um, I did that for about three and a half years. And I became licensed within a few months of, of getting that job um, so that I could help my, um, my boss with everything because there are certain tasks that you have to be licensed for certain conversations that you can't have unless you have a real estate license so i got licensed so that i could do all the work and that turned into me doing all the work and so um after a few years of, of that i was just like you know what this my personality i originally viewed it as um a roadblock as something negative against the the role and after all that time, I saw that my personality type is actually a strength. Mm -hmm. Staying organized, being on time, having um, all the, these resources of my personality are not common in the real estate industry. Right. And actually has set me apart. So um, well, I, I have to I tell you, I mean, since I've met you, you're the most friendly type A I've ever met. I mean, literally. <laughs> it's like, you said you're type A, I'm like, seriously? I don't really get along with type A's because I mean the only time I'm like really super type A is like when I'm doing like stuff like if I'm working on a project with someone or I'm, I've got something very specific I have to focus on or something that's task related um, but it's like everything in your day it seems like you've got to be type A like all the time I mean literally right it's a mix <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to confirm nor deny that, Marty. I'm just going to kind of leave that back there. <laughs> but it definitely comes in handy because um, a lot of things that people don't realize with real estate is how much paperwork there is. That's paperwork, exactly it. Deadlines yeah. and negotiations and things that it's not just, here's a house, sign the paper, give mm -hmm. me my check. It's like, right. there's a lot of work. And that's, I, I'm trying to imagine, especially that was something that really has just with my personality as i work well with people i do people really well the paperwork thing i can't stand i'll just be flat up honest right here i mean literally that was the first thing that scared me away from real estate when someone asked me to get into it i'm like paperwork dude there was that and then there's all the people i have to work with right because first i've got my own paperwork 
okay, fine, train me to get my paperwork done, that's great. But then I've got to work with all the other people. What if they're not done with their paperwork? And that slows me down. That's just one more stressful thing. So how do you juggle that? How do you juggle that stress of working in that dynamic and still keep that smile on your face and keep everybody happy? How do you manage that? So uh, that is actually probably the biggest challenge for me um, because I am very good at getting my work done, just like you said. And so depending on others can be difficult for me. But um, when I keep my friendly persona and um, <laughs> kindly remind my fellow agents what I need and nudge them along and just... I mean, do it respectfully because we are all juggling a lot. And maybe it's not that they're not good at paperwork or deadlines. Maybe they just got swamped and something else happened that this slipped through the cracks. So I just gently nudge and remind by, you know, calling endlessly until I get an answer. <laughs> I really am out there to fight for my clients. So I'm not going to be too passive about it. Right. But, um, but I, I find that most agents really are just we're all in the same position and we all have the same goals so when we treat each other with respect and kindness and understanding of what our roles are and how busy they can get working together it actually goes a lot smoother you know you, you actually just kind of did a little life lesson there for like working with kids <laughs> it's interesting because I tell people when I, cause I used to do like uh, relationship coaching like a long time ago and I stopped when I came to Oregon because my business kind of crashed during the recession but when I worked with people I used to tell them say, you know you work with adults we're no different than kids I mean we're just bigger kids with these bigger weapons called past experience <laughs> you know we can't tend to let go of that past experience to kind of learn the lessons we need to learn but isn't it kind of the same? I mean, is you because know, what you just said is what we would teach a child, right? Be respectful of other people's situations, you know, and just kind of recognize that other people have other things going on. I mean, hello, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and well, I mean, same for me. Like I, <laughs> what I have going on is I need this paperwork from you. But, right. um, <laughs> but reminding someone that I need it without being a jerk about it can actually get you a long way. Yeah, it's amazing. That old adage, uh, you can catch more bees with uh, honey. Yes. Right. Okay. So now you're you, you're a Eugene native, correct? Incorrect. Incorrect. I thought we had this conversation. Maybe I forgot. I am old. Where are you from? Maybe you forgot because I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. I am originally from Southern California, LA County. SoCal, okay, okay. And I've been in Eugene for almost 15 years. And this, I swear, this is where my soul was born. Mm -hmm. Yep, I have to agree. It's a very interesting place here. Now, is your husband from here or is, did you guys move up here together and said, let's try something different? He is from the Dallas, Oregon. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, and he, he moved to Eugene just a year before I did, so we met here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Hmm. I'm curious about that story. We'll have to talk about that offline. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so I think about uh, the current state of what we're in right now, and you've been really busy. How has the pandemic affected your business? So, um, nobody told real estate that there was a pandemic. Real okay. estate just kept rolling. Good. And in fact, it got a little crazier because uh, interest rates went down. The buyer pool went up because people who could never afford a home before now had these low interest rates. And so there were just tons of buyers flooding the market, um, which, as you know, made those prices go up because there's more competition, fewer homes to sell, prices going up as people outbid each other. And then those become comps for the next sale. So prices just kept going up. It was wild west out there in the pandemic. The biggest change that I had was things going virtual. I was mm. used to meeting my clients face to face for our first initial meetings and we turned into Zoom meetings a lot. Which I think actually kind of helps, right? Kind of 
allows you to do more meetings. <laughs> it, it is actually quite beneficial. And I know that it's going to stick around even when we do have more opportunities to meet in person. Convenience is something that uh, we just didn't quite have as a resource to the masses. So it's definitely going to stick around. Well, I tell people um, I'm actually glad if there's a byproduct of the pandemic that I can say is a good thing that happened is pulling the bandaid off of virtual um, meetings. Um, I'm not going to say that I would prefer them over a face-to-face. -face. I think if face-to-face -face, um, would allow, uh, absolutely, by all means. But in certain circumstances and timing and whatever the case may be, I almost would prefer a virtual first-time meeting over a face-to-face -face any day for a couple of reasons. Like I tell people, for me, it's I love them because you get someone so at the basic level of transparency on a first time virtual meeting you can totally tell whether they're present or not they're not rushing to another meeting their phone is not out they're not looking at their text or their emails it's a very first time meeting you have you totally have their attention love that I mean, it's the most captive, true, pure conversation. I mean, I, I love them. I mean, they're like the most insightful conversations ever is virtual conversations for the first time. Love them. Yeah. Just in my mind. No, it's, it's, it really is a great resource that, like I said, I'm sure is going to stick around. Well, I'm glad. So I'm always trying to do what I can to help. And I'm sure I would like the viewers that are tuning in today, your friends or clients or people that know you, how can we help you? How can we help you with your business today? So I would love to just meet more people. I, I'm really into networking, um, meeting people in the community, business owners alike. Um, I love expanding my network of uh, professionals that I can refer my clients to okay. because I like being more than just their real estate agent. I like to be a resource for their needs in the community, um, needs beyond purchasing a home, uh, even if it's home related, like if they need a plumber, I love having a network of plumbers I can refer to them. Or if it's um, an after school program for their kids, I love having networks there so too that I can show them some things that are beyond real estate that can still help them. And also, I would just love to meet more people who are looking to buy and sell. Okay, fabulous. So meet people. What's the best way to get a hold of you when we meet people? So you can call me, you okay. can text me, okay. you can email me. Um, okay. My website has a, a contact um, little form you can fill out. I can be reached many ways. And I'll make sure, folks, that I put all that contact information in the comments so you have it. Uh, but definitely want to make sure that we get you as many contacts as possible. I mean, since I've met you, you've been a gem. I don't know if that's just my charming personality or is it just, I don't know, maybe. I think that's what it is. No, I'm just kidding. You're fabulous, and I would love to make sure that uh, we get you as much as possible. So is there anything you want to share before we go? Anything, any last thoughts, any closing thoughts? Hi, I'm just, thank you for having me on your show. I really oh, appreciate um, just chatting with you. You've been a great help in my business too and helping me with my social media. And um, thank you. Appreciate you are it. so welcome. You're a great friend, a great business colleague, and I look forward to doing more business with you as we go forward. And hey, matter of fact, did you do that work on your LinkedIn yet? Moving on. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, next issue. Let's get real. That's right, folks. It's time for that new section of my show called Let's Get Real. Amy Nelson. I have in my hot little hand 3,000 questions. And I'm going to ask you every single one of them now since you have not worked on that profile. <laughs> How much time do you got? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Question number one. Let's get real. What seasonal food item do you love? Seasonal food? I love food year round. What I know, right? <laughs> that was a tough one for me, but I know what I would say. But So, um... 
I I would go with raspberries. Um, raspberries, okay, yeah. by themselves. Yes, we have a bunch of um, raspberries that grow in our backyard. They are actually the my husband dug up some vines from um, his grandmother's house before she passed away so that we can enjoy every summer the same raspberries that he grew up eating okay. same strain and when the raspberries are <laughs> oh, i'm so excited like <laughs> <laughs> like i hear your face is like totally going like oh raspberries <laughs> yeah um when they when they have the blossoms come on it's really exciting we like to watch the bees do all their pollinating and then the raspberries just boom every summer in our backyard and um, we have friends and their kids come over and the neighbor kids come over and everybody just picks them i mean it's a feast there's so many that's awesome um, and i just yeah i enjoy them um fresh i enjoy freezing them and having them later in my um sparkling wine <laughs> mm, the sparkling wine. oh yes the sparkle gotta have the sparkling wine yes okay <laughs> Okay. I, I was just going to say, I mean, you, you kind of beat me a little bit. I mean, I was going to just say the McRib. That's what I was going to say. For se it's not really seasonal because there really is no McRib season, I guess. Um, it's just something that I like because um, they're just amazing. There's nothing <laughs> like nutritional about them at all. They're just awesome. Although I will tell you, Arby's has a brand new one, and it's like a country style. They're like they're actually even marketing it to compete with the McRib, and I went and had one, and they've been marketing it. it's like it's real, it's a real country rib, and they use real rib meat and real this and real that, and I tried it. No, it's the McRib still wins. I'm sorry, I was like I had it. And I'm like no, it just doesn't work. So right. raspberries for you, McRib for me. <laughs> All right. Now, do I ask this one last or first? Okay, here's the second one. Have you ever milked a cow? And if not, would you try? I have milked a cow. You have? Yeah. When did you milk a cow? I milked a cow as a child uh, on a field trip to a farm. Okay. I, I had a little chick in my hand. <laughs> I have a picture of that. And, um, and I milked a cow, which... Um, was interesting <laughs> <laughs> how old were you oh probably about six or seven pretty young okay but i remember it being quite squishy yeah i've never ever milked a cow ever it was interesting to me because um i just thought that you squeeze but you have to squeeze and pull at the same time yikes that just seems like I'm sorry. I just feel like that cow, like, sorry, dude, I don't know ya, but I gotta get up on there. Sorry. You know? <laughs> don't, you, don't you gotta have more of a relationship with the cow? You gotta know them a little more. Hey, buddy, what's Prefers. happening? Have a conversation, you know? Can you tell me about your cow life today? It just seems rude. Just get up in there and start. Anyway, okay, last question. And this is interesting, I picked this one before I even asked the question, so how did you meet the love of your life? We met on an online dating site. <gasps> oh my God, their symmetry. So did I. <laughs> Which one did you meet yours on? A free one because uh, I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, I wanted true love, but I didn't want to pay him so <laughs> for it. <laughs> And you actually got a good one off of a free site? Oh yeah. my god, you are lucky. All the women watching are going, you're kidding me, and I'm paying how much money for this? <laughs> Canceling, going this, free right now. And thankfully, it was pre-dating um, apps, so I never had to deal with the swiping, never had to deal with the the quick or the... Picks and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too much into that. Right. Um, but I mean, if you want to talk lucky, my husband's the lucky one. Oh, well, <laughs> duh. <laughs> totally came across wrong. Um, I am incredibly lucky to have him. That is like, he's incredible. But um, I was the first and only online date that he ever had. Really? Yeah. Wow. So he likes to tell people he's batting a thousand. That's like, that's like 
home run, and I retire. <laughs> First at bat, home run, and I'm done. Yes. Well, my wife actually, she's a, she was my make good because my first uh, first wife and divorce was online, and I met my second wife just as my online subscription was expired. Like, because I still kept it, so I was doing research for like some stuff I was writing online. So I do online writing and stuff for relationships. And I used to help people with their online profiles. I had a lot of girlfriends, like just friends, just plain old friends. And I would help them with their profiles. And I would say, okay, take all that garbage out because you're basically telling them everything they need to do to con you for the first two months of the relationship. So I was like telling girls how to like fix their profiles. Then I met my, my literally my wife now. I, it was like literally the last day of my paid profile on a dating site. And here we are. Like 12 years, 13 years later. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. We've been married um, eight years, so we've been together 11. And we've been married five, and we've been together for like 13, 14. There you have it, people. It can happen. It can happen. For some of us, right out of the gate on a free site. For others of us, you have to take a couple of times a couple of paid sites. You have to take the hits. I had some crazies on mine. I'm like, Whoa, what the hell am I doing? No way. <laughs> yeah, I went through the misery of the online dating. My husband did not, which is why I said he was the lucky one. We are very lucky to have each other, yeah. but he was lucky in the whole experience. Yeah, I was not lucky either, Amy. Was not lucky at all. <laughs> That's another conversation for another time. All right, I'm going to wrap this up, but I want to tell you, thank you so much for being on with me today. Uh, folks, definitely reach out to Amy Nelson, Amy Nelson Real Estate. Uh, I'm sorry, Amy Nelson Realty Pro. That's where you're going to find her. She is a pro. And again, I'll have all her information in the comments. Um, I want to thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. I can talk to you all day, but obviously you got to go make some money. I got to make some money. But I want to thank you for this so much. Thank you. You bet. Have a great day. Say goodbye. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs> To the brim's hip, black denim need a slim fit. Same people that I flex with be the ones that I'm in the gym with. I'm a living legend, you a dead cause, and I'm dead. No, I'm dead, right? Leave it early, but I'm here night. Long and short to keep the head right. Teed up out in Malibu, got sand all in my good shoes. Press a with the pessimism, but I only came for the good news. I am the show that they came for, hitting the target I aim for. We've been discussing the contract, just telling they get what they pay for. I am not with poverty, really, it started to bother me. I need the yacht with the property, they come with the